Uh, hi there, it's Peter here again. Thanks for tuning in for my next uh, next video. Today I'm gonna share with you a few few tips and tricks and uh, the deconstruction of Pocket World Cup schedule uh, website, which I put together for myself and for all the soccer soccer fans out there. So I'm gonna look at the plugins I've used, uh, the technique I used uh, for some of these CSS3 and uh, JavaScript animations, and hopefully you can learn something uh, from the deconstruction as well. The main plugin behind the whole interface, behind the whole draggable interface, is uh, GreenSock and their uh, draggable plugin. Okay, so this is an example from uh, draggable and throw props plugin. And when you see these grid, and when you throw throw the the, the box, you'll see how it snaps to to uh, the table table cell. That's basically what I've used in the background of that uh, timetable as well. So I've got a current date, which is the middle section, and everything else. The timeline always snaps to that point. So let's first have a look at uh, some of the functionality. So apart from the dragging and um, snapping to to the grid but also when you click on the flag you'll see groups uh, you, you'll see games by the country so you don't have to go through the whole timeline and find all Switzerland games or, or Germany games you can just click on the flag and see all the games in in one uh, view uh, when you click on the, on the group group letter or you press that uh, on on your keyboard, you get a view of uh, of the table standing. So at the moment, obviously, there's no no games played, so it shows just zeros. But I'll keep updating it during the World Cup, so it will uh, stay up to date. And uh, as I said, you can also use keyboard. So if you press A, it brings the A group. B brings the B group, and so on. And uh, then I've got also. Uh, helper, helper tool. Oh, sorry, I did turn it off just a second ago. So the helper screen brings uh, just a little description of uh, what each of the elements mean and uh, how how you can use it. And uh, and you click on it, just goes away. You can also use the key keyboard uh, navigation left and right. That will bring that will go scroll to the next and previous days, which is quite handy. People ask for it. And uh, also, there is a menu at the top which brings you, which brings you like a shortcut uh, to different stages of the tournament. So that's round one, round two, round three. So this is the group stages. Then round of sixteen, quarterfinal, semifinal, and final. It's like a shortcut instead of you having to scroll, especially on mobile. If you need to scroll down uh, to the end of it, it might be quite painful. So this is a nice uh, shortcut shortcut menu and uh, that's about it there's also a there's also countdown days to go which uh, I used the plugin which I'll talk uh, talk about in in a, in a minute so that's about the, of the functionality and now we're gonna dive in into more details uh, inside of the uh, web developer toolbar or tools so the first handy plugin I wanted to mention is uh, used for the days to go countdown. And as you see, it, it counts down from 99 days to whatever days are remaining. Uh, that plugin is called countup.js. And uh, it lets you define the starting number, the ending number. Uh, how many decimal points and uh, the duration of the animation as well. So it's pretty handy. You can use also easing so it uh, eases out when you start animating it. You can go from low number and count up. And uh, as, as you know, I, I'll, I'm using it for counting down the days, which is pretty nice. And uh, you use it, uh, you can see it quite often these days on. Uh, uh, graphs and uh, and uh, sort of interactive infographics as well. So this plugin is quite easy to implement. Here is the files uh, I'm using. So this is the HTML diff with the calendar and uh, the days to go the span is uh, empty by default. And then in the JavaScript, uh, JavaScript file, uh, I've got uh, 
I'm getting the days to go, which is the start date of the tournament, and uh, which is the 12th, uh, 12th of uh, June, and uh, then I'm get getting the difference from the start date to today. And uh, if the, if that's uh, bigger than if that's zero and up, then uh, the text is uh, being rendered inside of that days to go span. Okay, so it's uh, it might sound a little bit scary here, but what start date is the start date of the tournament, end date is the end end of it. Today is the current date, and I'm using the moment JS to define and format these days, which is another uh, handy plugin. I want to talk about it in a moment as well. But the days to go, it's a simple span, and I'm just uh, rendering the remaining days inside of a span uh, days to go. The starting number is 199, so if I do changes to 299, that would render down from that number. The days to go is, is the uh, number, ending number, and then 2.5, so I don't have any decimal points, and 2.5 is the length of the animation. So I mentioned the moment uh, JS uh, JavaScript library, which is actually very handy, and uh, it's the main reason why I'm I've actually created this schedule because I wanted the game times uh, to be converted automatically into the viewers uh, viewers time zone. So there is no you don't have to think about uh, which uh, time zone you live in. This automatically uh, converts the game times into your own time zone, which, as I said, it's a uh, plugin called moment.js and it's very very handy very easy to work with and uh, gives you some powerful uh, things which you can do with your dates and uh, you can count dates from days uh, you can count three years from now on and uh, you can just format days time zones and uh, anything you can think of related to times and dates I'm using the moment time zone, which is the handy uh, extension or, or another sort of plugin uh, for the main moment JS. And uh, that's, that's used for converting time zones, uh, times between zones, to say it, uh, say it better. And uh, as I said, it's very handy to, very easy to implement. You just uh, add, uh, you just reference the time zone JS and time zone data, which con which consists of all the time zones in in the world, and then you you uh, convert any moment into time zone, and you define the name of the time zone. So I'm getting this from the devices. So whatever device you're looking at, uh, that's that's uh, what is it converting to, and. Uh, if you want to see this actually working, you can change your computer settings to different time zone and the game uh, times will change to uh, that new time zone you've got set up. So that's how I was actually testing it. I was uh, going to the settings of my Mac and uh, changing the computer uh, time zone to to see if 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 it work if it's working. So even the EST is changing based on uh, where where you live. And uh, this been uh, probably the best uh, best feature of of the whole schedule, and uh, getting a great feedback based on that, because a lot of people might be traveling uh, to Brazil, so they don't uh, they want to know what uh, time's gonna be when they are in Brazil, and um, yeah, so just the general conversion of the time zones been very handy and uh, very well received feature. Another feature which uh, has been mentioned a uh, few times is uh, the folding of the games. So when you load it, you'll see that the timeline actually folds in. And if you follow it quickly enough, it will... Uh, so it folds in only whatever's in view. And then when you scroll to the next section, it folds the rest of the schedule. Yeah, so it's pretty pretty nice uh, looking and uh, catchy eye catchy effect as well. So I wanna s I wanna show you uh, how how that was uh, done. So if I go quickly to somewhere else, you'll see how it nicely folds in. 
again that's been uh, used uh, that's uh, been done uh, using GreenSock and uh, so each of the days have an article with a header with the game day and then the section for each of the games so the first uh, game day has only one game but if I scroll down you see the game two with uh, one header and then three section for each of the games and they been animated one after the other so header starts and then each of the sections falls into uh, play place then uh, that's done uh, using GreenSock as I mentioned and uh, we've got a function called animate items in which takes game headers and game sections so it takes all of them uh, based on if they, whether they are in a viewport or not and then uh, there is a animation in timeline which has a slight delay and uh, on complete I'm just uh, clearing all the CSS styles from it and uh, using the stagger from so uh, getting all the headers and animating the rotation X uh, minus 90 degrees and transforming the origin 50% zero with the elastic out which uh, gives that nice uh, elastic effect as well this is the stagger which is the 0 0.1 which is the delay between animating one and, and the other and uh, once that's finished obviously all the sections uh, going from two so we're staggering them from two one by one and uh, getting from uh, alpha zero or auto alpha zero which is opacity and visibility uh, uh, hidden and again we are rotating it x to minus 90 and uh, with the same elastic bounds as well so we're going from uh, auto alpha zero to alpha point uh, alpha uh, auto alpha one and the rotation from x uh, minus 90 to zero okay and when when it's all done we're giving these uh, headers and sections uh, class animation and we just uh, doesn't that that helps us to get the rest of the anim uh, rest of the headers and the sections for the remaining animation so when uh, when i'm animating the first few which are in the view they getting a class animation and so you see this animation and class means when I scroll to the next part of the section um, next part or next part of the timeline I'm not actually getting any of these ones anymore in the collection of headers and sections just speeds up the animation in general uh, I've got also uh, animation uh, folding animation on and off and that is uh, used for mobile phones I, I found it being uh, probably quite uh, tough on some of the mobile phones so uh, I had to turn the animation off uh, just for that reason for the performance but on the desktop uh, I think that's pretty pretty slick uh, slick effect okay so that's it uh, I think I went uh, on longer than I expected and longer than I wanted but uh, let me know in the comments or uh, send me an email through through my website if you wanna another part of the site to be deconstructed and I've got also links to all the plugins I've used uh, on the Pocket World Cup schedule deconstruction. So go to my blog and uh, find this article and uh, you'll, you'll get the links to all the plugins I've used. Uh, some more uh, code snippets as well. And uh, yeah, you can let me know in, in the comment section here as well. So yeah. Looking forward to hearing from you and uh, if you've got some soccer fans don't forget to share these uh, with them they will they will love you for that and uh, they will definitely appreciate uh, to have something uh, that simple in in their pocket okay thanks a lot for watching and uh, I'll talk to you next time bye